production, the regular law of production, not the concept of physics actually, but the way we estimate <coughs> for the today class we choose to use uh, the Simpsons as a so the first part is uh, I entitled the uh, uh, catch paint deconstruction, meaning that uh, uh, the, the first part is to understand how we uh, built about uh, we built the catch paint uh, uh, already we have uh, some insight on it but uh, we'll we will go deeper also on the virtual matrix. <coughs> oh, this is a, uh, there is a um, famous book which is What is Life by Erwin Schrödinger that years ago, uh, before uh, DNA was actually found, uh, he uh, talked about, which is the physicist approach, uh, approach to uh, the problem of life, what is life. It's very nice, it's a very short booklet and I, I advise you to read it. Mm -hmm. So there, is, there was a phrase about, about life that I, I actually use it here and change in some words. It said that the great important and often debated question is how the events that happen in catchment in soil, plants, forests can be the, described by physicists physical chemistry in the world by hydrology, <coughs> that's what's in the world by physics, and the other words were life and biology, in the case of uh, Schrodinger. The preliminary answer is that this talk would rise is the following. There is a partial ability of present hydrology to account for these events, and there is no reason to doubt that they can be even more in the next future develop development of our science. So, because there is some uh, long debate going on, that uh, is sort of uh, promoted by uh, people that think that at the end we are not able to, to describe the complexity of hydrology. It's not exactly my opinion, and my opinion is that we use it, stay in the road of uh, physics and mathematics maybe improving <coughs> physics and improving mathematics, we can get what we, we want. So uh, what is our problem? How are we, we see another basis, which is Melebrio, as an example. But uh, uh, here we see a, another quite famous, I would say, it's to be famous because uh, people and researchers in Padua uh, engage uh, several gauges, uh, several to get three gauges actually and several stations around this basis, this is a small case range, 100 square kilometers. What we learned uh, in this class was to subdivide the, the, the case range in parts, and that's the, also the first part that we apply to do uh, for doing uh, rainfall or not. So, but here we have 42, 42 case range. Occasionally, this is the answer of, uh, of uh, one problem, which is the answer. There is a famous uh, Isaac Asimov um, uh, novel where there is the answer of the universe and the answer is 42. <laughs> so that's <laughs> the way that I put 42. If you want to, if you like uh, sci-fi, it's nice reading. This is another catchment which is the Blue Nile River Basin. This is 1,075, uh, uh, one, uh, one, 175,000 square kilometers. The Blue Nile is uh, mostly in, uh, uh, entirely, in, uh, entirely in Ethiopia. That's uh, is like Tana. And, uh, uh, Actually, the water of Nile is mostly produced here by monsoon that arrives in Ethiopia, so it's really important. It's a lot, so we pass from a, a basin of 100 square kilometers to 170,000 <coughs> square kilometers. Here we, we did the work, we subdivided the stuff in 400 uh, subcatchments. So you saw that the, the subcatchments in the Posina were around 
some kilometers, two square kilometers on average. Here, if you do the calculation, each, uh, each basin is around 400 kilometers. So there is a certain variability of, um, of, of the uh, granularity of information that we need. Uh, you also notice here that the granularity is not. The dots are always, the, the, we use different symbols to the slides, but the dots are uh, measurement stations, certified measurement stations in, in all the area. Here we have the, the, the one before, 12 measurement stations and three gauge stations. So quite a different situation. This is a river additive. This is still a in the wish list, actually. The first two, we work on it. In, the, in our wish list, there is a river additive. So, uh, uh, let's say closely, is a uh, 11,000 square kilometers. So smaller, much smaller, 10 times smaller than, uh, than uh, the blue nine. But here, the, the, the challenge is to subdivide it in 10,000. Uh, sub basics one each square kilometers because also we have a, a huge amount of stations here. You know, cars here are the station. So the first thing that we can learn is that our modeling is uh, is affected by several things. Uh, one is uh, it's not so that the <coughs> objective thing would be to have information at a square kilometer scale for. Uh, everywhere in the world. But in Blue Nile, this was actually not feasible in the sense that the, we didn't have enough measurements to characterize all, all the stuff. And actually, maybe we'll talk tomorrow about that, uh, for characterizing much of the stuff in Blue Nile, we use satellite measurements. So the tools that work, that goes around all of this are different. What it is, this is uh, the Amazon River, around uh, more than 8 million uh, uh, square kilometers. If you should apply this, we should have at least one million subcaching to, to describe it. I think it, it, would, it, it, is, uh, it, it is not unfeasible to do it. it with, uh, it's just a technology. No, not uh, uh, for measurement. Obviously, we need to have the appropriate measurements. And here we can go only, only by satellite measurement. And some, and some, you know, around <coughs> the river discharge in the in the Amazon is high. So the average uh, the discharge is around two thousand. Uh, 200,000 cubic meters per second. So, around, because it's so huge. But then we have several rivers, um, not as big as Amazon in the world, but for instance, if you consider the Congo River, it's also a huge river. If you consider uh, Bangladesh, where you have the Brahmaputra and the, and the Ganges River, coming together, you have several places in the world where you have large rivers. So uh, here the, the question is, OK, we, uh, we did all this stuff in, in, for, for catchment. They were small catchment. But the objective here of, of hydrology is to study all these scales, scales of catchments, different sizes, different data, <coughs> different climates and uh, to subdivide them uh, in the appropriate manner. Uh, during the years, uh, what uh, uh, was, uh, this is a, a, I don't know where I take this, but I think it's, okay, it's a Fon Silvano Pecora, which is in the Cinzia Alessandrini, this is the system they have after the River Po. The Po River is the largest in Italy, for who uh, doesn't know, and uh, you know <coughs> what 
uh, we grew, we are hydrologists of my generation, we grew with the idea that uh, at the end, uh, the, uh, the water movement inside uh, a catchment can be described as a se sequence of reservoirs which are depicted. Here there are named three, uh, uh, three uh, models used operationally, which are HDM, HMS, HINM, and the other is Copy. And uh, they are of use operationally there, and they are essentially reservoirs, a reservoir in cascade that take into account uh, what, uh, how the basic work, meaning that uh, the, the catchment is subdivided in subcatchment, and in, sub in each subcatchment there is one model like this one that works and then is connected in a way or the other. This is to assume that uh, at the end, the hydrology, the movement of water, the mass balance of the, of the system can be reduced to a system of ordinary differential equations. We can provide alternatives to that, for instance, using partial differential equation. That's the uh, space uh, scheme is completely different. But let's say uh, we, we, are, we are not going to dis discuss this choice. Let's say that we inherit from history. There is some rationale for, for, for using it. And uh, we have, uh, and it, that's the way we adopt here. And uh, uh, ordinary differential equation is a, an equation like this one. And uh, where we have, uh, uh, several reservoirs, X is the, the contents in the reservoir in this case, and then we have an in input which is uh, arrived and outputs the <coughs> uh, uh, provider. The, all these functions are function of parameters or uh, function of the, of, uh, the time, and, uh, and obviously the input and the output are function of the uh, quantity uh, on, on the quantities. Uh, there is no, uh, because we think that the uh, fundamental laws are uh, described by, essentially by partial differential equation, even unknown partial differential equations uh, in, in space, uh, we should justify that we go from partial differential equation to ordinary differential equation to some Averaging problem, averaging strategy. Uh, here I, in the media, I will I can show tomorrow. I try to show how this is possible, <coughs> but mostly this passage is, but is 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 based on heuristics, meaning that uh, yeah, we know that the process should be described with partial differential equations, but then we uh, sort of integrate, but we. Sometimes we often you don't use the integration, and then we end up with the <coughs> systems of ordinary differential equation like those ones. So for us, it's more or less a fact. The fact is, our we model those catchments, whatever the size whatever the information with reservoirs. Then we can discuss if it's true, is, uh, how, uh, is it, if it is a good approximation or not. The result is that uh, the uh, uh, hydrology as we see today is, today not uh, in, the, in these times, but uh, today's here, <coughs> more, is, uh, uh, is, a, is a dynamical system dynamic uh, a set uh, of equations where actually they are open dynamical system, meaning that we have input of water <coughs> and output of water. Actually, we would say input of water and energy and output of water and energy. And uh, they are parametric because they depend on parameters. Uh, these, these equations uh, depend on some parameter that we have to calibrate. And we already talked about calibration. And they are often non-linear. If you go, uh, the literature in mathematics, physics, the biology, etc., 
brain studies are full of uh, um, dynamical system. Uh, we, uh, at the end, uh, uh, it's not just the, the operation of hydrology to reduce uh, the, the complexity to a dynamical system, but it's uh, spread everywhere in, in every discipline. So we have studies uh, in, in many disciplines. There is a lot of mathematics. System and control theory, for instance, is also talking about uh, uh, the dynamical systems. But the system in hydrology have, have their own peculiarities due to the fact they are uh, open, nonlinear, dissipative parameters. So uh, we are in this situation, and, and uh, each reservoir is one ordinary differential equation. Uh, there we have a lot of models around the world, and uh, I wrote something about which is the best model in my opinion. That there, there are a lot of times where I talk about it. So uh, later on when you download the slides that are already actually uploaded, you can go to the link and see <coughs> what, what are my opinions. Marco recently gave me another reference which is interesting that I don't cite, but I will <coughs> join to this one about the choice of model. The other question we have from the practical point of view today is that can we treat all this, uh, this, uh, uh, this different situation in the same way? And, uh, and here I uh, is another depiction of the Amazon River where we, we put all the, Itali uh, the European states inside to see the dimensions of the Amazon. Uh, inside the same infrastructure, uh, uh, the, the answer here is that uh, we try to give uh, this, uh, say that this is actually possible because uh, we did uh, the Posner catchment and we did uh, the, the, the Blue Nile, which is two very different scales of vessels with the same infrastructure, which is the one you are learning here. The other question we have, if we have all these processes, maybe we can use some parallelization techniques that use the form of river networks to uh, parallelize the, the processes that happens in separate parts and then eventually uh, joining the results uh, at the end uh, when it, it is <coughs> And also the answer is yes. Uh, the key is that uh, uh, we can represent all the processes uh, happening in space through graphs. Uh, graphs in the, sen in the mathematical sense. Uh, um, a, a set of uh, nodes, connections between nodes, and uh, uh, we can represent the interaction among all these type of systems, especially if they are uh, described by ordinary differential equations uh, with graphs, and then use graphs to uh, control the parallelization and also the quality of the interaction between the elements. Uh, one way to represent this, uh, this thing is uh, in this paper, we uh, say submit is, is, is written manuscript submitted to water resources research, I will submit tonight anyway. <laughs> so it's going to be submit, submitted, but it's already there. And this is a way actually to represent those systems. But we have a little bit a cue of what, uh, how we think this system is a, <coughs> a problem like this. Now we, uh, we take a basin with five parts. How we divided this in five parts? But the, the, the question here was simple. Firstly, we derive the river network. Then we derive the, what we call the hill slope or the, or the soup catchments. And, uh, we uh, gave to each part, we say each part is uh, going to be independent. There are uh, several reasons because we can approximate uh, 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 in an approximate manner to think that these, these are independent. And there is quite a lot of literature. So uh, the, the graph representation of uh, the, this catchment can be this one. 
uh, where essentially this circle, circle is a, a group of uh, ordinary differential equations, and this, uh, this square is instead a, a flux between the things, between the various parts. As you see uh, the, in the square, in the red square, we have a, a, a subcatchment, which is the C1, the one subcatchment. The model used there is very simple, unless we expand here in a much more complete way as we've seen in 10 minutes or so. And then we have all the connection in, in each part of the basin. We have uh, a system like this uh, that are joining and exchange data from the point of view informatics from this thing. All the, all the, the parts can be run in, par in parallel. All this part can be can run in parallel because they don't depend on the other parts. Uh, we have that, that a backbone, which is actually the main, the main river, which is this one, that get inputs from the other parts, but also that in principle can go in parallel. Uh, which is a, a, in, with a process called piping. So the other are processing, got the inputs to the, this one, this one starts processing, <coughs> the other take, go, go one step forward in time, and so on. So the topological structure of the river networks can, can help also parallelization and discretization of the basin. And uh, the topological structure can uh, make us understand uh, wi which are the connection and in case the feedbacks we don't see feedbacks here actually this is a simple tree there are no feedback, feedbacks no loops feedbacks means that we should see loops here so when we talk for instance as a hydrology uh, as a, a <coughs> uh, health system science it's not there in this case there is no any feedback. There is not, not any feedback that we can see so far, but then we will see later on. <laughs> Where they are. <coughs> uh, one question. Uh, which software, software are you doing such nice graphs? By hand. By hand. <laughs> <laughs> With Kino. Yeah, uh, just uh, produce balls and uh, okay. In principle, in principle, we can uh, we can create them automatically from the analysis of the river. And uh, yeah, uh, there, there, there in all uh, so you can we can reverse the things built a software uh, built uh, with uh, some sort of uh, uh, painting <coughs> uh, stuff attach balls from that derive the equations and I will give a, a, a glimpse of how to do it. Uh, theoret uh, not theoretically, practically it's possible. We didn't do yet. No. There, is a, there is a tool in MATLAB that I implemented for creating this graph, but uh, I think there is something else in Python. Yes. And you give a network and they create the, the graph structure yes. and the metrics associated. Yeah, in this case, uh, yeah. Obviously, this uh, this uh, 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 in the paper that I s show you before, there is a mathematical treatment also of the graph and the, all the matrices that are implied uh, implied to describe the connections. So yeah, the graphics in this case uh, start to be a representation of the mathematics, and you can decide what is going on. <coughs> uh, actually, on the single hill slope, we don't have. Uh, we we you will not we, you will use a, a more complicated model, which is this called call a method reservoir model, and uh, I will describe in detail uh, uh, in in a in a while. And more or less, to start to read this, this graph, you say that you have one, two, three, four five balls, each ball is one differential equation. 
and the, and the squares are the input and the output of uh, the, the system. So from this uh, representation, and uh, we'll teach you exactly how to do, how to do it, you can write down the equation. At least the, 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 the external part of the equation, but because then you have to specify what is the mathematical content, content of the fluxes. And here you have, for instance, for this, <coughs> for this fluxes, an ex, a, a, <coughs> the explication, the ex, ex, exploding the, of the, the, the expression used. So, for instance, uh, the PR, which is this one that goes in this direction, is uh, this function H of uh, the canopy, the <coughs> I max, which is another parameter, and, and uh, the things like that, and everything mm -hmm. it, it is explained. So at the end, we obtain things like this, which is our discharge, the first discharge in this, in this course. So. <laughs> It is important. And, uh, no, no, no. What yes. What about the value of the groundwater? Your model you consider a groundwater surcharge? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, groundwater is uh, one who is here. It's just an ordinary differential equation. Like there, the is no, uh, there is no interaction between groundwater and the river. So groundwater can recharge yes. the river somewhere. Yeah. Here. This is not explicit here, but here you, and then you will see later, I will show you later, there is also, these two are sand, so the, the water that appears in, uh, in the river is the sum of these two. So in this sense, this graph is not complete. Obviously, it's not a, a special <coughs> description of groundwater, and groundwater here is uh, uh, simply connected to the structure of this one, which is the structure of a subcharge. And this is obviously an opinion, let's say, about the, the what. But we can do in different way where we, we put this wall, for instance, in a different manner. Sorry, Ricardo. Uh, we will have uh, the occasion to deep uh, in this, let's say, conceptual model of the how our catchment works. Yes. Because uh, so I would like to, to deepen it. In 10 minutes. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so but the first I wanted to introduce the general concept. So mm -hmm. uh, the other concept is that uh, here, for instance, you have a high mod, uh, high mod and the other is called simply called model. <laughs> Not that it was, the name was a ELM model. And uh, here there were, were used two actually two, two different uh, two different uh, represent two different representation another model respect to this one which is called i mode instead of this one and here you have a repro different reproduction of the of the measured stuff by the two models that you can observe different behavior here good or bad we don't know the usual uh, indicators are good uh, anyway in the average, but there are certain differences, which also depends on calibration. Indeed. More detailed thing is this one. <coughs> See the difference between two models. One, one thing that uh, in, in all this system here, you change this ball inside the, the our geoframe with the, you send this change just this, this set of balls with another set of balls, so you, but you keep all the framework around the same. And you, then you can do a fair comparison between, the, let's say, the quote-unquote physics of the problem, of the solution. Because, uh, you know, when you have the, the external comparison of two models, you have different ways to interpolate the the rainfall, different way to treat the evapotranspiration, <laughs> different way to use the radiation. So you do, you co you do a comparison between bananas and uh, um, avocados, I don't know, bananas and apples. It's not, a, it's not exactly uh, fair. You compare usually the whole system. Here you can compare the, just the, uh, the, the scheme that we have. 
but this is not the full story. This is, I saw some face a little bit uh, staring, glazing at this thing. I'm not explaining what it is. <laughs> but this is essentially uh, a, a simple, you see, but uh, you don't know what it is, but you see the balls, so any balls is a, a, any ball is a differential, a partial, ordinary differential equation. Uh, you see some straight <coughs> ball there, where there are actually two balls, means that there are, for that particular part, there are many, dif a, a, a many different ordinary differential equations for that process that are parametrized in some way. And then these are, are the inputs and the outputs. And then, if you go up and look at what is written, this is a, a simple energy budget. In the energy budget, we have a lot of things more than the, in the, the water budget. <coughs> we have a lot of things more because we have a, a particular fluxes that we recognize as a, the one MES is a bubble transpiration. HS is the sensible heat. Uh, air, air is radiation in some sort that goes on here and the day <coughs> is precipitation because when you have movement of mass I mean any mass of, uh, move going in is bringing also some uh, internal energy so this is the budget of internal energy of particular peculiar things and why I put it because uh, you know it, lo it can look simpler that simple that uh, we can treat uh, uh, as ordinary differential equations uh, the problem of the catchment. But if we want to move to treat uh, the health system science, we have to, cu to couple our uh, water movement, the mass budget with uh, the energy budget, for instance, because the energy budget we saw yesterday is also controlling the evap evapotranspiration, which is a big part of, 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 the, <coughs> of the budget. And we, if we don't do sooner or later, we do large errors. <laughs> I don't say, <laughs> I stay, say him, but uh, so we have also to check the energy budget when, the, when, we, when we for doing real things. Again. But we don't even do the, do, uh, we don't even do the control of the mass budget when we do hydrology use because people doing rain for or not usually. Usually, don't check that the mass budget is <laughs> closed. Here, what I am envisioning is that with the same system, you can also include uh, the energy budget. We don't do here. We didn't do at this level with this model. This is just envisioning what is going on. But uh, yes, this will be using system of partial differential equation connected <coughs> each other. And this is not enough because if you want to, to, to deal with, a, to deal with a, uh, hydrology as an earth <coughs> system science, we have to go to treat with uh, vegetation, for instance. This is a simple model of vegetation used by Giacomo. <coughs> and uh, Giacomo Bertoldi, and that is the paper. This is the represent, same representation of the of the budget, of in this case the the, ma the mass budget with three uh, differential equations with the, the connection we have. One is the the root uh, the, the part of the root, the part of the steam and the leaves, and the part of the of the dead material. So at the end we have a, a big uh, things like this. This is, I think, understandable only by Italians. <laughs> 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 this is the how the left part is subdivided <laughs> in the past. <laughs> so, but the ideological cycle is even more complicated. <laughs> so because it is like this, we have this at least three the, uh, water budget, <coughs> the energy budget, and the carbon budget. So my message is, uh, don't do any more just uh, rainfall or not. Do all together if you want to have the right answer for the right reason. Even if we are using 
ordinary differential equation as an approximation of the behavior of, the, of, the, of what is happening on, on a single HRU, hydrological response unit. Here, uh, the connection between these three parts are, are not evident, but I can tell you that uh, there are. The answer is in the paper that in the manuscript that I have submitted to water, water resources research, mm -hmm. which I'll share for you. So I don't want to. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you will be mm -hmm. surprised. For you. So uh, what is uh, what is you will be called to do is uh, just to do the regular not part at least to check the, the mass budget and then the message for the PhD students is uh, from now on you have to go also the energy budget and the and the carbon budget if you want to do really hydrology. Uh, 